Welcome back, everyone. I hope you had an interesting first part of the show. Uh, we're switching gears here, and we are going to Florida. Stuart, Florida, businessman Tom McKenna, owner of Seacoast Water Care, has been asked by his landlord to move to another location because he does not speak Spanish. Apparently, his inability to speak Spanish is an affront to some in that South Florida community. Uh, McKenna's water conditioning business shares the same building as a check cashing store and a Mexican restaurant, both of which feature signs in Spanish. Now, the day after Independence Day, uh, Mr. McKenna received a letter from uh, landlord Ivan Monroe telling him to consider another location, even offering McKenna uh, other space he owns. Then in another letter dated August 1st, Monroe informed McKenna his rental contract was being terminated. Please remove all of your possessions by August 31st, the second letter stated. Well, uh, Mr. McKenna is with us here uh, this afternoon, this evening on paltalk.com, on News Talk online. Uh, Mr. McKenna, welcome to the show. How are you? Uh, very good, thank you. Well, this is a uh, very distraughtful uh, issue that we're going to get into here. Mr. McKenna, tell us, first of all, am I pronouncing your, your name correctly? It's, uh, it's McKenna. McKenna, Mr. McKenna. Okay. Mr. McKenna, tell me, uh, t tell me, how did this all come down to be? What exactly happened? You, seven years you have been doing business uh, at this particular location. You've been paying your rent for the last seven years without any problems whatsoever. All of a sudden, get the L. What's going on here? Uh, I'm not quite sure. I was quite surprised when I got the letter from him. So, um, stating basically he, his vision as having that center being, you know, completely Spanish and serving the Spanish needs. Now, demographically, just so I can give you a little bit of a an idea about how Stewart is made up, it's made up of about 95% uh, American English-speaking businesses and residences, and compared to 5% maybe Hispanic. Um, in the particular neighborhood where the plaza is at, there's a large rental base of property back there that there is a lot of day workers and that are living back there. And it's been a lot of stores that have been opening and closing, catering to that particular segment of the population. Um, but when he gave me the letter, what was disturbing to me is that, you know, I held on the letter, you know, kind of agonizing over it for about a month before actually it broke in one of the local newspapers here about a month later. And, uh, this Monroe's response to the reporter that broke the, the uh, news about this letter is basically, you know, it, he could have a vision. If his vision was, you know, one of the main reasons was because my sign on the marquee out there was in English, not in Spanish, and that, uh, you know, Mexicans pay and Mexicans stay is what he was quoted as saying um, <laughs> in the interview. Mex and, yeah. Mexicans pay, so Mexicans stay? Is that what I yeah, heard correctly? Yeah, yeah, and you know, I, I kind of chuckled at that because I guess after being there for seven years and paying my rent on time and being a good tenant, doesn't amount to anything. And this is coming from another American English-speaking landlord and property owner to another American English. And, I, and it's not like we don't cater to uh, the Spanish or the Hispanic population because we cater to anybody. We don't discriminate against anybody. Well, obviously, anybody that walks into your store it, 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 it is able to and, and has been purchasing from you for seven years, correct? That's correct. And in fact, my secretary, my main secretary, is born in Puerto Rico and, and better Spanish than she does English. Um, so so well, let, me, let me stop here and ask you this. Now, you, uh, you employ uh, Mexican-Americans, correct? Um, no, I don't. Well, I, if I had the opportunity to, yes, I would. But, but, no, the, I don't. but you just mentioned this. Oh, okay. So this this uh, lady that my, you, my secretary is born in Puerto Rico. Born in Puerto Rico. Okay. Well, I think that that pretty much says a lot uh, here. Uh, you you have you have an employee uh, in your business that speaks Spanish fluently. So there is no problem with communication between your business and the customers. Correct. Absolutely not. So if a customer comes into your uh, into your business and wants to speak Spanish and wants to buy something by asking for it in Spanish, he or she can do that, correct? That's correct. Then I, I, I just don't understand why your landlord, uh, um, Ivan, uh, I, I don't have his last Ivan name. Ivan Monroe. Ivan Monroe, 
would oust you from your business. I, I just can't see the I, I don't see the understanding here. I, I really don't either, and I think after this past week, unbelievable the raw nerve that it's touched with not just locally here but across the country. It's just the response that it, that we've been getting on, on you know, my company's been getting in support, you know, from what's happening. And just you know, you're going to be one of the first uh, radio stations that I'm talking to. That you're going to get a little bit of a, a breaking news here that one of the most prominent attorneys in the area just took the case pro bono. Oh, he um, took it pro bono. No kidding. Wow. Uh, his name is Willie Gary. Willie Gary. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, to you, first of all, I want to say uh, to Willie Gary, uh, I, I wish him uh, all the best that he wins this case and that you take them for everything that they have. That's my opinion. Well, the, the, the other thing, too, is that we're going to be accruing a lot of costs for moving our company and stuff. It's already cost me in business. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gary is K. I've got to pay him a retaining fee. So if anybody's interested, I have in the past week had to be. I had to open up a um, an assistance fund with Wachovia. So if anybody's you know 